In sports, the scoreboard doesn't tell the full story, but Netflix does. Stories about dads who happen to be world-class quarterbacks and a battle for the heart, soul, and direction of the multi-billion dollar business of F1. Whether you're a diehard fan or you're brand new, Netflix has the stories for every type of fan. You can watch these incredible sports stories like quarterback, F1 drive to survive, untold, and many more now on Netflix. Welcome to the Scala Supporters Pembrokeshire Podcast. Okay, so welcome to this week's Westerer is Besterer podcast. We we say Westerer is Bester. It is. It is honest. It is. Stick with it. Westerer is Besterer. It'll come. So as always, joining me this week is Martin. How are you, Art? I'm good, mate. I'm good. You know. Apart from uh, everything else has happened, I'm good. <laughs> How are you doing? Well, let let's start on a positive. Let's let's get straight into it and start on a positive. How was your boys' day as mascot? Because I saw you, I saw you, but you were you were had your back to me the whole time, and I I didn't want to go running down and go and shouting and go, "Cooey, Martin, you!" <laughs> it would look a bit weird, you know. But yeah, I did see you. But um, yeah, it looked like you had a good day. The back side, so that that was nice to win. <laughs> so, well, how did how did how did you get it? Uh, how did he get to be mascot to start with? Well, they they used to run this uh, kick club where mm. they you paid like a, a five or a season, and you know your kids would go into a random draw for a mascot. Mm. But they haven't done that since COVID. So uh, I literally just sent an email in asking, oh, how do I go about you know, registering to try and be a mascot? Mm-hmm. And about a week later, uh, the woman who arranges it all sent me an email back. We've got a space for the Cardiff game. Would you be interested? And boom, just went from there. So you couldn't swap out? You you couldn't like take his place or nothing? It had to be the boy, yeah? Yeah, I, I did ask. I, I, I was a little bit gutted, to be honest. <laughs> 30 years in the life. But it looked like he had a, a good day, a couple of photos with uh, Foxy on the pitch and stuff and, and things like that. So, did you enjoy it? Yeah, it was, you really loved it, to be fair. And uh, obviously, you wouldn't have seen because we were mm. inside. The uh, the player of the match medal, they uh, they give it to him first. So, they, they opened it up with this little fresh sealed packaging and everything and let him wear it. Ah, oh, cool. Uh, um, Josh Adams was walking back and forth and he had a little couple of photos with him as well. So it it was really enjoyable. They they couldn't have done any more oh, on that's Saturday. Good. Was involved. It was absolutely brilliant. Uh, that's good to hear because that's that's the sort of stuff. I mean, we'll we'll come on to crowd management later, but that's the sort of stuff you want to have from your club, isn't it? That's that's you know you want to know that kids are being made to feel special and it's building memories at the end of the day, isn't it? Yeah, I'll tell you the the one thing he didn't like, and I I can understand it because because of who he is, was the fact that when we were waiting in the tunnel, every single player that came past was just give him a little rub on the head, and he was like, "Ah, <laughs> 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 oh, that's good though." And, and everyone, yeah. that's one of those things that when he gets older, he'll look back on it and it'll oh, be yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Yes, we got some cracking photos. And they, they've sent the ones from the their actual photographer to us today, and fair play, they they're top notch. Cool. Well, I've I've got a photo of your back if you want to, you know, <laughs> a photo of you standing there going, going like I, I'm here, I'm, I'm definitely here, Mark. It's a photo yeah, so of that, your back. That's, that's fine, you know. <laughs> oh, look at me. So, what what did your boy think of the game? He thought it was cold, but no, no. In, in, um, <laughs> in all fairness, he he enjoyed. He actually sat down and watched the vast majority of the game. Like, like he, he's only eight years old, so if he sits and watches half a match, I am more than happy. Yeah, but he watched the vast majority of the game, and he was he was pretty into it for most of it, which is absolutely brilliant. 
<laughs> well, I watch. I don't know if you could see him from where you were, but in the uh, West Stand, you know, where all the half-time kids go. Yeah, so, it is team over as well. All ah, right. Well, some of them were playing uh, touch on it for most of the second half. <laughs> All around the, the the far seats on the left hand side, and you, you could see that half of them were playing touch on it, or or they were hide and seek, or something around that half of the, uh, the thing. So there is only a a certain limit that even you know seven or eight year olds can can get to. But yeah, they enjoyed the game. They enjoyed the game. Put it that way. So before we discuss the game, we'll we'll, we'll have a little look at some of the three-word reactions from... I was expecting a lot worse, I'll be honest. I was expecting um, an absolute barrage of anger. But I think it's more frustration than anger. Do you know what I mean? It, it just... It, it. I don't... There are some people on, on social media, and let's, let's remember that social media... There are certain people on social media that love to cause a bit of a stir and, and put stuff out there just to rile people. And then there are some people that genuinely think putting, you know, expressing their feelings on, on social media is a good thing. So uh, I saw some of the comments that were around um, the usual ones, you know, sacked a lot of them, nobody cares. And, and, I, and I get where that frustration is coming from. But I just think we need to be, as supporters, we need to be careful about what we put out on on social media. And because players will read it. And more importantly, players' families will read it. You know, I think some players purposely switch off to it. If they if they know they're on a bit of a bad run of form, they they switch off to it and they just go, look, I'm not I'm not touching Facebook, I'm not touching Twitter until this is all you know, until we won a couple of games and everyone forgets. Look how quickly Dragon supporters have forgotten how bad <laughs> the whole of last season was. You know, they've had one win and one decent game and they they're back you know, singing on the top of a rainbow sort of a thing. So it wouldn't take much for us to turn around and go, you know, actually all is forgiven. We're doing all right. So I just think we need to be conscious and, and, and aware really more than anything that when we're putting stuff on social media. Yeah, that... It's not like a conversation in the pub. It's once it's there, I mean, even if you try to delete this, someone will have that saved forever. Yeah. And, uh, you know, for the players that the players are doing their best, they 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 are giving their best, and all right, it may be not be working at the minute, but there's nothing worse than knowing that you've had a bad game and then someone telling you absolutely in no uncertain terms, this is what I thought of you, and you know you should never be near this club. Do, do you know what I mean? It's it's not helpful. It does it doesn't help the player. It doesn't help the team. It doesn't help the club. People know when they've had a bad game. You know, you don't need to go and tell them. You can vent your frustrations, but there's there's got to be a point where, you know, you've got to hold yourself back and go. Actually, do I really? Need to... Yeah, you know, if 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 you're halfway through writing a tweet, and and then you go, uh, you know, would my granny want to know this sort of thing? Do, do you know what I mean? And yeah. and just just have a bit of a common sense check but yeah anyway so some of the three weird reactions that that we had um so ian ian was asking what's going on uh mandy was very helpful she answered with not a clue so i think the two of those two are having a bit of a, a bit of a chat hugh was quite disappointed he said it's getting worse now patty patty was very positive last week um but she's obviously run out of the dictionary. She's got no words left. So, you know, um, but I think if she's got no words left, I think she must have given a few of them to Beverly. Um, either that or Beverly can't count because this is a three-word reaction now, Beverly, and the clue is in the title there. Three-word reaction, getting worse, really disappointed. So I don't know. I, I think... Patty's no words. I think she's got no words. Beverly must have taken a few of them and, and put them out. I, the general feeling... 
yeah, I lost you a bit there, mate. <laughs> yeah. uh, we, we'll average the words. Yeah, we'll average them out, yeah. No, I, just, I think, you know, some of the stuff I was seeing on social media was a lot, lot worse. And it does feel more frustrating than than anger. You know, I think that's, if you look back at some of the reactions from the Delaney era to where we are now, you know, Delaney era, uh, era was more about, you know, if we started going behind, that was it, bump. If we were five points behind, we were 50 points behind. There was no guts, there was no oomph. And then one week we'd play amazing and the next week we were complete rubbish. So, you know, it is very, very different now to back then. So, what, what were your thoughts on the game? What, what what did you think on the game? I mean, look, looking at the game from, you know, my point of view, a lot of things went right. And I know people might be thinking, what, what are you on about? But the fact of the matter is we, we kept the ball a lot. We spent the majority of the game in the Cardiff half. It, it was literally just not being clinical enough and having two tries ruled out, which really ruined the game if, you know, in, in terms of us getting the win. Because I've, I've no doubt, you know, I, I, I re-watched the, court, the, the forward pass, you know, Goal doesn't go forward out of his hands, and that is the law. Mm. No, it doesn't matter if the ball goes 100 meters forward. If it leaves up, goes backwards out of the hands, then it's fine. And then you look at uh, McNichols disallowed. You can clearly see, I think it was Thomas Williams slapped that ball back. So it's, it's play on. Mm. It is, it, it's, it's frustrating because you, you can see how another ref, another TMO would award those tries. Mm. And obviously, it's hasn't gone that way. Um, if if you look at us defensively, we we have improved a, a fair bit. I mean, we gave away what was it like nine, eight penalties? Mm. I know for us to get under ten last season was it was a job and art. Uh, yeah, I don't think we did last season, did we? I think every single game was double figures last year, wasn't it? And even when I look at, you know, they only scored one try, and that was. Simply one missed tackle, one and missed tackle. That, that, that was it. It, yeah. it was just a missed tackle. It weren't, it weren't a lot of phase build up. It weren't pressure. It was carry going through Sebastian, making an offload, and that was it. That, yeah. that was just one moment. It never felt like Cardiff were going to follow that up at any other point through the game. I think they had one more attack. Um, at the end of the first half, or maybe the start, it, 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 you know what I mean. There was no other point where you thought, "All oh, right, they're building pressure here. We're in a bit of trouble." It, it always felt, like I say, defense was quite. Cardiff never really challenged us in defense. It was it was quite tight, and we forced the kick quite a lot, which is why we had so much possession. And Cardiff did a lot of defending. And like you say, and I, I'll disagree with you with the the forward pass because it was it, quite near to me, quite in front, and yeah, it was it was <laughs> it was about three foot forward. And I know what you say about the ball going backwards, but it it went about three foot four. But even you know, even with I, I agree with you, what you know, Thomas Williams, how they cannot see that from a TMO is beyond me. And the bit that annoyed me, you know, we, we'll talk about Fafita in a minute, but um, Llewellyn, there was, it was just at the start of the second half, um, and he came round the side of a rock with a shoulder and went for someone's head with a shoulder. Clear shoulder, wiped out, bang, thank you very much, had to go off. And... But play went on and on and on and on and on, and then I think Cardiff had a penalty at the end of it. And it was, but it was a phase of play. It was right at the start of phase of play, and it was three minutes later when play stopped, which is a long time in rugby. You know, that's a long phase of play. They still should have come back and reviewed that because that was a dangerous, dangerous right. thing. But I, I don't understand how 
Right, with Fafita, I've got I've got no issues at all with him being carded on that. Whether it was red or yellow, either way, that was a card. It was a stupid thing to do. But at the same time, so was Llewellyn, and he should have gone as well. And that changes the complex of the game. You know, and I, I know Llewellyn is a young boy, but there was also a point in the match where he tipped Combia beyond the horizontal yep. and didn't put him... You know, I'm not saying it was a, it was a card, but it was definitely a penalty, and nothing came from it. Yeah, yeah, I know the one you make because he looked like he was about to spear him, and then he stopped. But like you say, he still went down head first, so it wasn't dangerous. But like you say, it, it wasn't a card, but it was a penalty, and it was later. I mean, that referee. I've seen Cardiff fans saying how we got away with that with that referee is unbelievable. And, you know, I don't want to make it into a, a, a referee bitch fest, but we just don't seem to be getting anything from referees at all this season. You know, everything out there. I think it must, I don't know if it's, you know, one of those things that goes around referees that, you know, Scarlet's a dirty, ignore the fans. You know, there was some stuff that was just blatant. And there was a touch, the touch judge was right in front of us. And you, so I was in line with that touch judge, and there was a ruck in the middle of the field, and you could see two Cardiff players were they weren't you know just in front, they were beyond the middle line, and they were edging on our side of the ruck, yeah. So they were a good, you know, eighteen inches, maybe two foot from where they should be, and we're shouting, you know. Have a look at it. <laughs> Fella, come on, this is your job. You're a touch judge. All you've got to do is go, he's offside. And then the ball went the other way and the touch judge turns around to us and laughs. And you're like, how, how is that funny? That should have been another penalty. We should be 30 metres, 40 metres down the pitch with a line out attacking in their 22. You know? So I just, I don't know. I just think we, whether the word's gone out around the referees or whatever, that Scarlets at home, you know, just don't get any penalties at all. Um, was I, it? It was disappointing to be in that same situation, and even after ten, fifteen minutes, we sat there going, "Oh, here we go again." You know, we're just not getting anything out of the referee, and and it's blatant. How blatant does it need to be to give a penalty? You know, to to apply the rules of the game. But that's it. I blame TMOs more than I do referees. I think referee can only see what he can see and he can only give what he can give. But that's the job of the TMO and the touch judge to pull up and to help the referee. And they're just not they're just not up to scratch, you know? Yeah, and what I what I don't understand on that account is I, I haven't I haven't checked this at all, but last season and this season the URC have said that they are pairing reps and TMOs together so that they develop, you know, a good working relationship, a good understanding. So they should be, you know, they, they should be something there between them that they know, oh, if I've missed this, you know, he doesn't pick this up very often or, or, or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. And it, it just doesn't seem to be that that communication is quite so clear. It's as though, and I know a lot of refs are guilty there. They go, this is what I see. Yeah, yeah, agree. And then they're off before they, anyone can say anything other than yes. You know? Yeah. yeah. Well, but it was things like, you know, we, um, so Jared Evans was taking a penalty or whatever, and the ball kept falling off the tee. And the ref told him, he gave him a little bit of a warning, and he said, come on, fella, hurry up. And then it fell off again, and he went to take a drop kick. So... When you get to that bit of you can take a drop kick, that penalty bit has finished. Yeah? Yeah. And it's a drop kick you can charge. So he goes to take a drop kick, and then the ref goes, oh, no, 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 no. Right, you boys back. Stop. Right, take it again. And he gives him another 30 seconds. And you're like, well, what was the point of, of that? Either he's taken too long, he's wasting time, and it's a penalty, or we're allowed to charge the kick. You don't go giving him another thirty seconds to reset his kick. I think what they should bring in 
is um, a clock reset. So if somebody, so say for example, they, they go to take a kick and there's three minutes left on the clock. And let's say it's a windy day and it keeps blowing off and it keeps blowing off and they've got to get somebody up to hold it, you know, like that old style guy and he's got to lay on the floor and put his finger on the top and all of that. That's going to take more than your minute. So the referee should have the ability to say, okay, reset the clock to three minutes. Right, okay. Now you've got one minute from there to take the kick. Do you know what I mean? They, sh- they should have that ability to say, you've just wasted two and a half, three minutes here. So you're not, and, and it's not your fault. It's the wind or it's conditions or whatever it is. So I'm not going to penalize you for it, but I'm also not going to let you benefit from it. We're going to reset the clock to three minutes. And yeah. I think that's a better compromise than penalizing. Because if it is windy, we live in Wales for crying out loud, it's going to be windy. You know, there are going to be days where getting that ball up. On Saturday, I have no idea why he could not get that ball on the tee. He kept, he kept trying to stab the tee into the ground. You know, if you've ever stood on the park, you'll know that that ground is 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 like a carpet. It's not like there was a bobbly bit. You know, it was perfect. What are you doing, fella? So, yeah, it, it's bits like that that wound me up. That the referee was... I I think... Cardiff played that referee better than we did. I think that's what it came down to. And when you look at the the speed that they slowed it to uh, against the speed that we wanted to play, you could see that when when particularly when Blacker came on, it, it, the game went up a notch. You know, it felt like it was in slow motion up until then, and then it, it did go up a notch. But Cardiff just slowed everything. You know. It did kind of win the uh, the rucking battle, so to speak. I mean, I I haven't seen the official stats, but I I don't think we had any any rucks under a second, or even under two seconds for that fact. It it did seem really really slow. Yeah, but then even you know when you're going into the last fifteen twenty minutes of that game, when we came back to you know when McNichol scored his try, right. So you're back to within seven points. So, you know, the, by the way, boys, converted try here, and we've got this game. And there was about 10 minutes left, I think, maybe a bit more. And everybody was just kind of walking. Do you know what I mean? There was no, there was like, there was a scrum. It, the, yeah, there, there was no urgency, was it? No, you, you could just see them e- even before that try came. I like I, I know when you're talking fifteen minutes left this time, but the the scrum resets it just seemed to be taking an absolute age. Mm. Um, even even if even if Cardiff tried to slow it down, you know, if if we are there and ready, then you know they got to pick up that five ten seconds, haven't they? Mm. And and that's what I mean by they played the referee better because you're right. If if our front row and second row were in there and and we're ready, and we're going. Well, come on, ref! What are we waiting for? You know, you, you're painting that picture in the in the ref's head that they they're wasting time. You know, get into a line out, and you know we're in, we're ready. Yeah, come on, ref! What we're waiting for them? You know, if that's the picture you're painting to that ref all the time, when he gets to the bit where Jared Evans going, oh, I can't kick ref because the the floor is not level. You know, the referees are right. I've had enough of this penalty gone. Uh, do, do you know what I mean? I, I just think they played that referee better and slowed that game down to a point where where we we just couldn't play. I, I think they defended well. Don't get me wrong. I think Cardiff did defend well, but we never put them under the kind of pressure that we should do. You know, oh, if all attack was anywhere near what it was against Ulster, we we would have blown them away. So yeah. I, I've got no doubt. That. I mean, Ulster by large are a much better defensive team than Cardiff are, and you know we we did fairly well on the attack mm. in there. But it never felt like you know there were a couple. The bit that annoyed me was where 
there was a penalty. Gareth Davis, quick tap, and he goes. And he's made 50 metres. Nobody with him at all. Absolutely nobody. It, and you're like, you know, you, I'm not saying the boys don't want to win this game, but when you see in the rabbit taking off, then go chase the rabbit. You know, you know something's going to happen. He's not going to make the line. Go chase the rabbit because that ball's coming. And I think he got pulled into touch or, or, or something, but we we lost that ball. We, yeah, we've done that, the hard Yeah, that, that was one of the battles that we, we did lose pretty convincingly. Is just We seem to be pretty... I, I know Cardiff, like you, you said a hundred times, they got about 30 million back where it was. Yeah. Uh, you know, they, they did their job really well on Saturday. I mm. mean, they, they, they smashed us on turnovers and slowing our ball down. We just mm. we just weren't getting there quick enough. And mm. that example you give with Gareth Davis taking the quick tap, it's as though... And I'm, not, I'm not saying they weren't switched on, but it's as though it, it was not planned for him to be taking any quick taps. Like, we know Blacker does. We know Hardy does. Gareth mm. Davis has done in the past. It's like, when he's on the pitch, oh, no, he doesn't take quick taps, so don't worry about it. But somebody somewhere must be going, you know, we we know that this is how you, you have to break them down. You've got to, you've got to do something different. You've got to try something different. Tap and go, bang, right, there you go. You know, we were trying cross-field kicks in in between the two 10-yard lines where, you know, they they were fully manned up. There, there, was, there was no point in that cross-field kick. And then you get to that last five minutes and we're attacking their, their line. Combier was on the far left touchline. They just had a, a, a yellow card. So they were a winger down. Combi was on the far left touchline. The closest defender was Max Llewellyn, and he was touching the bloody post. Combi literally had half the pitch in front of him, and we kept going forwards, 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 forward drive, forward drive, forward drive, forward drive. And he's sitting there, and you're going like, you know, we didn't get that ball in Combi's hands once. Not a single time did that ball come across the line and into Combi's hands. It went into Johnny McNichol the other way. Not once did it come across the line to Combia, you know. And it, it, it did cross a few times, but I think Halfpenny took it up once. Uh, I think I think Step Evans was on the ones on the pitch at thirteen. He, uh, I will yeah. say this: filling in at thirteen, Step Evans, he done a pretty good damn good job. Mm. But not Combia, he was very anonymous, and it it wasn't down to him not looking for the work either. He just it didn't come. It's like you looking at the last the last twenty minutes and the amount of time we spent in and around day twenty two with the scrum resets, mm. and you look you're looking at the field like you, you'd have been a, a similar sort of angle to me, and you're thinking we we just play that out and you look here you you run a diagonal line someone straightens up and you, you're walking you're walking through unopposed. It's yeah. This is why we're not doing this. It. Like don't get me wrong, Callum Forney is is brilliant picking and going off the back of the scrum. But we, we, you know, we can't expect him to do everything on his own. Mm. And but we had a man down. Uh, they had a man down in the backs. We had a man over. It automatically we had players in the backs, and we kept going forwards, forwards, forwards. And I just think that I think the, the, it felt like they were just desperate. We we got to that stage where. We've got to keep this tight. We've got to keep driving because we need the points. I don't I don't care about, you know, let's play fancy rugby at the end of the season. This is about getting points on the board. And nobody stood there and went, well, the, the way to put the ball over the line is, is to give it to the people with nobody in front of them. And not, you know, like I say, the best back row units in, in Wales, they stood right in front of you in blue and black, boys. The, there's there's a there's a couple of guys in red stood out there on the wing. They got nobody in front of them. Let's give it to them and have a crack, you know. And and that, that just that game management was lacking. Um, and I, I just I think it was desperation. I think it was just that bit where we were too frightened of 
you know, let's Making try. A mistake. Yeah, and it was sad because we we definitely had the beating of Cardiff. We had the beating of Cardiff. We had the beating of Ospreys. Potentially, we should have beaten Ulster. Potentially, we should have beaten Benetton. Like I say we've come so close to all of them, and and it's it's more frustration than anything that we just haven't been able to put that ball over the line at the right time, you know. And then we went and gave, uh, you know, we had a, the ref is running with his hand up saying, "This is your penalty. You've got to. It's your advantage. You've got to kick to the corner here. You can go again." And then, get, you know, that, that rock, that one arm, that one shoulder into a face. And, and quite rightly, red card did, you know, like we said, but... No arguments. <laughs> it is, it's frustrating though, isn't it? It's... I, I, I watched it back a few times and, you know, the the rock was secure. It was, it was Shane Lewis who was coming in. He didn't have his hands near the ball. He wasn't going to get near the ball. And it, it would have been a better move for, for Bayer to just pick the ball up and try and go another metre. You know, mm. chances are, you know, a player of his, of his physique, he might have ended up going over the line himself. So mm. I, I just don't understand what, what went through his mind, what, what sort of red mist came over his eyes. Mm. Because... I, I said before, if, if this was, you know, a, a young kid who was, you know, playing, you know, senior rugby, you know, 21, 22, whatever, coming in, wanting to make an impact, I, I can understand him more, but this is a 10 plus cap all black. These are not the sort of decisions those players should be making. No. They, they're the players you expect to lead the other guys and go, this this is how you keep a cool head in these situations, isn't it? You You expect them to, like you say, pick and go or, or, you know, pick the ball up and pass it out. You know, I think that was one of the only times we actually did move the ball out and we had created space. Cardiff were a mile offside. We created that space. If that ball then comes out left again, chances are we're in. Just very... You wouldn't choose to be a Scarlet's fan right at the minute, would you? You, you wouldn't. You wouldn't go. Who's Who's feeling the best about the way their team's playing at the minute? I know what I'll do. I'll go and I'll go and support the Scarlet's because it's just it doesn't doesn't feel it's like pick the Scarlet's on a whim. <laughs> yeah, but it, do you know what I mean? It's, uh, like I I had my mates with me again who were ex football supporters. And they just, they thought it was a great game. They, well, not a great game. They thought it was slow and um, frustrating. But they enjoyed it more than they enjoyed a football game. Because the family atmosphere, the friendly atmosphere, the um, you know, the people around it, you, it just it felt better. Yeah. So for all our, you know, let's beat ourselves up and let's kind of... We're, we're very good at being down on ourselves. You know, their opinion of rugby and and rugby as a spectacle is very different to to what a traditional rugby supporter's view of the game would probably be. Do, do you know what I mean? It's and sometimes we need to remember that. You know, it's 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 not as bad as as we think it is. It's not as bad as we feel it on a Saturday. Because <laughs> I drove home on Saturday. Uh, how long does it take me to get home? About an hour and a half, I guess, to to get home. Oh, <laughs> the car was dead. It was. It was the only the only high point of that drive home was um, my mate John going. Ospreys are losing. Two minutes in, Ospre- Ospreys are seven nil down. <laughs> that, was, that was the only high point of the drive home. You know. Other than that, it was it it's was high point though, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's uh, it could have driven a bit longer and then the whole game, but uh, yeah. So yeah, so it was it was it was really really frustrating. But they were plus points as well. So what what, what kind of what plus points did you take out of that game? What, what did you think was going well? I, I thought our, our set piece was very much improved. 
especially out scrum in the second half. I mean, we already know when Jones and Ken Owens are pretty good scrimmages, but the way Harry O'Connor pinned Carey back and then done the same thing to Domikowski when he came on, mm. it, it was brilliant to watch. And then if we, we go to our line out, it's generally been problematic forever. Mm. And you know we 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 stole a few balls. We disrupted a lot, so it, it was really pleasing to see that. Mm. I don't think we lost a single line out, did we? I think we, I think there was one that went over the back. It was kind of like a it, you could tell something had gone wrong. Either the call was wrong, or somebody wasn't ready, or something. Other than that, like you say, I was impressed with the line out, and I've, I've been. I thought the line out was one of our weak areas up until the Cardiff game. And I, I thought, like you say, we disrupted their line-out. Our line-out was good. There was a platform to build on, wasn't there? You know? Yeah, we, we built a, a strong base for it. It's just, just a shame we couldn't uh, do anything with it. Hmm. So who stood out for you player-wise? Who was your, who, who was your, your guys to watch on Saturday? My guys to watch. I mean, is Callum Afoni is always going to be one. He mm. he just he puts he puts absolutely everything onto that field. And mm. you know, I I wouldn't wouldn't like to think where we'd be without him, <laughs> because he has been so immense since he since he's turned up. I was uh no, I was I was fairly impressed with uh, Costello again. I mean, he didn't have his best game. But, yeah, like I said, he, he's still a young man. He's still coming into his own. This this number one is still a very new thing for him. And, you know, he, he's fronting up, mm. which is really, really good to see. Mm. Baldwin getting his chance at 13. I know, I know he didn't get to play the full match, but he took his disallowed try amazingly well to, to ride that tackle and go over. You know, it, it, it's not an easy job. You know, anyone who's mm. playing will know. You know, to take take a hit and carry on going, it, it's it's not easy. Mm. And well, then, I... again, with with the scrum, I thought Harry O'Connor was excellent when he came on. Yeah, yeah, I I agree with you, mate. I thought Harry O'Connor was because he's still twenty twenty one something like that, and he he's ridiculously young for a, a prop. Uh, for a forward, you know, let alone a prop. You usually expect them about 23, 24, you know, and then they come into their own kind of mid-20s, 25, 26. So to be, like you say, holding his own and sticking one up the jumper against two international props, you know, that's not a, that's not an easy thing to do. So, yeah, I was impressed with him as well. Um, I, I thought Baldwin actually played really well at 13. You know, we, we said last week, didn't we, if we hoped Foxy would go to 12, Baldwin to 13, and he'd get a good run out. I thought Foxy played okay at 12. Um, I think we're, I think we're desperately missing Johnny Williams. And that 5'10 that, that metre punch, uh, you know, that uh, you're, you're getting forward 5'10 metres every time. I think we're definitely missing that. But... Foxy did okay, and I thought Baldwin played really well outside him. And like you say, Steph Evans, when he came on, I thought they played really, really well. But if Baldwin's now injured this week, you know, where, where do we go with our back line this week? I, I guess my, my question here for you, mate, is have you got a spare pair of boots, you know? <laughs> I do, actually, but... Uh... <laughs> You know, any number bigger than three doesn't fit on my back. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> doesn't suit you. <laughs> no, I, 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 I'm not sure where we go now with centres. Do you know I what mean, I mean? If Baldwin is on the injury list and no, and Scott Williams isn't quite ready, then naturally the next one in line is Eddie James to come in at inside centre and shift Foxy back to 13. Mm. But, I mean, Eddie James has been playing pretty well for the RFC from, from all accounts that I've, I've read. But it, it, it's, it is a, a massive step up. 
Mm. And like I said, you thought Foxy played what uh, played all right. I thought he played all right. He didn't get, he didn't have his pace shown up against him, and he he didn't miss. I don't think he missed any tackles. Mm. Mm. Playing at twelve, so I I think you know may, maybe his future is at, at twelve for the mm. time being, and well, to sort of whatever his pace issue is, if it can mm. be sorted, that is. But then maybe you know, like I say, if. Baldwin is injured. Maybe Steph Evans does play at 30. You know, when Steph Evans is really good with a sidestep and and that jinky feet, he he hasn't got the blistering pace that you need to play on the wing. And to be fair, he never has. He's been quick, but that's not where his tries have come. His tries have come from that jinking sidestep, that weirs you. A little bit like Shane Williams, you know, you could never get hold of the little git to stick one on him. He was left and right and in and out, and he'd pop it up in stupid places where you never expect him. And that's where he's always been good. So maybe putting him at 13 might give him a bit more freedom to play that kind of a role. Do you know what I mean? I mean, yeah, it's, it's obviously an option. The the one thing I would worry about in that regard is obviously defensively. Mm. Like like we said earlier, Cardiff didn't really fire many shots, if any, really against us. So there wasn't much for him to come up against. Mm. So it, it would, obviously, we, we wouldn't be able to tell because we're not on the training paddock. So it, it would be you know, a, a, a big decision for Gareth Williams and Dwayne Peel to really say, you know, Steph Evans, we want you at 13. Mm. But it shows how shallow the squad is, doesn't it? It shows just how reliant we are on certain key players. You know, I think we, if if Scott Williams is back, everything feels comfy. You know, we're like, oh, okay, this we're fine. If, if if Scott's not back, then you're in that bit where you're going. Okay, you're you're almost scrambling around. You're almost like, who is fit? Who's who's okay? What do we do? You know, I I still put Combi at thirteen, just because of his his size and his pace and his strength. And then we've got extra. I think Tom Rogers is okay to come and play on the wing. Or we'll put Patchell at fifteen and put Halfpenny on the wing. You know, we we've, we've got options, but <clears throat> none of them are ideal. I, I, I... The issue with Rogers is at the minute. I know, I know, he's uh, pulled his hamstring, <coughs> but uh, you know he played pretty well against the Ospreys, and I, I don't really think we've seen Rogers since then, have we? I think he was sub when he. I think he came on um, for the Ulster game, but yeah, I don't. This is a, our our injury list must be massive at the minute, you know. Absolutely huge, but so yeah, like I say there they were there were positives from from that game. I thought Halfpenny was good under the high ball. I thought Dane Blacker um, was has earned his place for next week. I thought he was he was lightning around the base. I thought he was just what we needed a bit of a bit of oomph, a bit of enthusiasm, um, and I I thought uh, Blake Thompson was having a cracking game. You know, uh, I know he was playing seven, but and and quite often you will see, you know, teams will put three sevens on the pitch. It, it felt like we had three number eights on the pitch in in our back row, and I, I thought he played really, really well. But particularly up against Thomas Young, you know, he was a young whippersnapper compared to 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 Blade. But I thought he, I thought he did really well. So yeah, I think there's a lot of positives there. And this was kind of going to be my my point for for this weekend's game. You know, this is our fourth home game out of five games, isn't it? Yeah. And we have a bit of a run of away games now. I think it would be good. One, one of the comments I did see from the weekend and was consistent across a couple of um, a couple of comments was that the players didn't interact with fans after the game. Yeah, I, I saw that. I noticed that um, someone said, like, uh, was it Wynne Jones and a couple of others came over to the to mm. the north and, you know, thanked the fans and all that. But a lot of the boys 
you know, went straight back into the changing room. Mm. And I, I do get that fan engagement is a massive part. But mm. we also need to remember that these players are still human. They they are still they're going to be feeling these losses more than us because mm. they know this is their job. This is what they get valued on. Mm. But I think there's there's now an opportunity in the after the zebra game. Like with that, it's going to be a low crowd anyway, you know. But a zebra are playing really well, you know. Zebra are, they're a good team now. And they're constantly improving, so we we need a decent crowd there. So why don't the Scarlets say, you know, after this game, players are going to hang around after the after the, the final whistle? You know, like they kind of do at the end of the season. You know, just to say thank you for attending all the the recent home games. We're going to hang around. We'll do some photos. We'll do some interaction. And you and you say to the players, look, boys, whatever happens at full time. Whether we win, whether we lose, whatever, it doesn't matter. You're still going to go and do that interaction. We're going to talk to kids. We're going to, you know, do the photos. So just be prepared for that. And two things would happen. It's one you would, you know, you know yourself. For for an eight year old kid, they don't really care what the score is. Their heroes are on the pitch, you know. And if you get a photo with your hero. You, that's that's your day made, you know. I am coming to every game for the rest of the season because he's my hero and I've just had a photo. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and... I know it's what you mean. Uh, it, it, was, it was a few years ago in the club shop and my boy met Hadley Parks and the photo I've got, he is so starstruck. It is it's just amazing the sort of impact that that can have, especially mm. on a child. And, you know, the, these are... The, the people who are going to be in our place in 20, 30 years' time. So you need to start somewhere. Yeah. Well, my boy had a, a photo with um, Cubby Boy just after he had his knuckles done. So he's got the, the photo with the knuckles out like that. And uh, it was at one of the um, Scarlet's camps. So um, he, he's waiting for the opportunity to have a an updated photo with him one of these days. But it, it's one of those, it, it's an opportunity to say to people, that, you know, thank you for 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 being, and, and you wouldn't get the animosity after. It's very difficult to sit there and slag off somebody that you've just had a photo with. Do you know what I mean? Or, or somebody that you've gone, you know, you wouldn't sit there as a supporter and, and say to Jonathan Davis's face, I thought you were absolutely dreadful today. You know, if Jonathan Davis is stood there in front of you, you'd be going, that's a shame about today. But hey, you know, chin up because we're supporters and we'll, we'll always be here for you, you know? On the subject of Jonathan Davis, I, I did actually speak to him after the game. Are you just <laughs> name dropping now, mate. You're name dropping now. <laughs> it, it, it wasn't just him, you know, I had, I had a like two or three words with half penny as well, but you know that that, that was him. <laughs> oh, but, um, no, and, and he was just so frustrated, mm. and you know, he because my boy was mascot, he obviously recognised him from earlier, and uh, we, we he said, "Oh, I'd like it'd be nice if you could come back." I said, "Oh, we're season ticket holders anyway," and he's like, "Oh, thank you." He was like, "Thank you for the support," and it was it was really genuine. So yeah. uh, it's just nice to hear. And I think more people need to hear that. And and I think more people would, I think the players would understand it, but it's it's very easy as a player to think everybody hates us because we've just lost. And the reality is, is we don't. Yeah, people are frustrated. People are annoyed. People are, you know, they were the idiots going, sack the lot of them, sack Peel, sack Foxy, whatever. You know, they're very, very small amounts of people. The rest of us, you know, we, we've said before, we we probably don't think Foxy at captain is is the best move, you know. And I, I got no problems discussing that with him to his face, you know. Do, do, do you prefer not being captain? Because it looks like your game doesn't benefit when you're when you're captain, you know. I'll be and and he can have a conversation with me. And then we shake hands and we go, you know, I still think you're a great player. I still think you're a fantastic player. Do you know what I mean? It, it's, there's no animosity there. And I don't think it would harm players to 
front up to some of these people and go, do you know what, mate, I'm doing my best here. And all right, it, it, it may not have worked, but damn it, we, we're here five days a week breaking our backs to try and give you a victory. You know, that's what we're doing. We're, we're on this pitch. We're trying to win. It's it's not like we, we, we're here and we don't care. We do. And yeah, sometimes it might not come across right, but actually this is this is how important it is for us. I think a lot of supporters would respond to the players and I think a lot of players would start to go, actually, yeah, you know, people people do understand and, and not the, the world isn't against us. And I think it might help. But we shall see we shall see if any from, from the Scarlets are listening to our podcast. <laughs> do you know about it? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I, 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 well, I, I emailed them early in the season about, you know, maybe getting an interview with some of the Pembrokeshire boys. And they said, yeah, yeah, we're up for that. But uh, uh, I haven't heard much since. Despite. <laughs> mm. Well, we'll, we'll see. Maybe, maybe they are listening. And maybe, you know, after this Saturday's game against Zebra, we'll have a bit of a. Uh, a thank you for fans and encourage everybody to stay and and let's gen- if if you're sitting there listening to this now as a fan and you're wondering do I go this weekend I I I really really encourage you to go I'd really encourage you to just take one more go and 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 support the boys and really show them that actually you know if if we're going to win a game Zebras are pretty good, you know. We've got Zebra, we've got Connor in a couple of weeks. I think we've got Munster soon as well. So we're, we're... Next, next. Hmm. after Connor, I think. Yeah, but do you know what I mean? We, we, we've got a run of games against some of the lower sides. So yeah, this is going to turn the corner, and we're going to start to build a run of games, and it's going to start to feel you know, two or three games, two or three wins in, and you're starting to feel like we've turned a corner, this is getting better, I can understand this now, and, you know, the, the bad days are over. So I really say to people, you know, give give it one more go this week. I'm saying that, I don't know if I can make it this Saturday. <laughs> a bit of a hit, I don't know if I genuinely don't know if I can make it this Saturday. I, well, I want to go. Um, I just don't know if I can get up there and get back and do the things that I need to do this Saturday. So, even though I, I'm I'm a short drive from the stadium, and I, I've got my season ticket, I've I've got you know my wife and my kids, but this Saturday is a half seven kick off. You know, it's we're we're coming into the coldest time of the year, yeah. and I like it's, it's zebra, you know, and and I don't mean to say you with disrespect, but when you're looking at at the fixture list, and you see that that's at half seven on a cold night, you're thinking, "Ooh, is that is that really one that I, I have to go to?" And and you do with especially like you say with little kids, and you're thinking, you know, bedtime, and then bedtime leads to sleep time, and sleep time leads to grumpy morning time. You you, you know what I mean? It's, it's an off on, like, yeah, you know. My well, obviously, my younger kids are, are in bed at seven o'clock. They, I mean, don't be wrong; they're probably not asleep, but they're, they're in their rooms in their bed. <laughs> yeah, and it is one of those things that you know. It's I know everybody's meant to share the the, the late kickoffs around and all of this. I don't see many three o'clock kickoffs for any of the Welsh sides at all. I see a lot more three o'clock kickoffs for Irish sides. Hmm. Okay, so that's what. The Ulster game was, wasn't it? It was for Ulster, it went for us. Yeah, well, that was a, that was the an early kick off, wasn't it? That was a one o'clock kick off, wasn't it? Yeah, that was so they could make the ferry back home easier. But there we go. So let's finish off with the Scarlets then by talking about the Zebra game. What changes would you make, and what's your prediction? Changes um, is based on the injury list. That's the strictly yeah. the. Yeah, it is. Other than swapping my front rows around, I I don't think there's much to really change. Obviously, bring in starting Black and Hardy on the bench. Mm. I mean, it's it's you just just I'm just looking at players and who who's available. Like I'm I'm hoping McLeod comes through as uh, 
HIA protocols to slot back in in the back row, especially with uh, the feet, uh, you know, having, having a few weeks out in the sun. <coughs> How long is he out for? Uh, I think the panel is on Wednesday, but I, I, I don't think it's going to be less than four weeks. So we're, we're not going to see him this side of December, I don't think. Yeah, especially with the the Autumn Internationals, you know, it's they could put him down in the development team on, uh, you know, then he'd, he'd have three games against the Dragons or whatever they did last year. I think we played three uh, um, development games on Friday afternoons, didn't we? During the... Well, I, I, I don't know if Tonga are touring this this uh, autumn, so may, maybe some of their games can get involved with that as well. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it, it's it's going to be a tough one, and like you said, it's hard to pick a side for this weekend without seeing the the injury list. I, I think we should change that around. We should we should we should have a fit list. <laughs> are you on the are you on the fit list? Or are you are you not on the fit list? That might be a better way of, of doing it because, yeah, it, it is a bit harsh this weekend, isn't it? Yeah, I think we are struggling to get, you know, 23, 25 actual first team players on that fit list. I mean, mm-hmm. if we go into academy boys now, I know, I know we're fine. But actual first teamers, it's, it's an odd job. Mm. Even down in academy, mate, there's not that many fit boys left in academy. Yeah, it's it's thin pickings right the way through, which is why I think we should be bringing in Owen Williams from um, Worcester. And if need be, you know, let's make a play for Ollie Lawrence. You know, let's let's go bold and let's say, right, let's bring in two international centres for the rest of the season and do you know what I mean let's let's put a marker in there yeah. I didn't realize you'd won the lottery <laughs> well yeah there is the, the cost side of it but like you say I, I, I think the players would benefit from like if you're foxy now and you're if you've got a little niggle and you're going, you know, this little niggle is getting worse and worse each week. Are you going to take yourself off and 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 nurse yourself for two weeks? No, you you're going to play through the pain. You're going to play through the injury. You know, gonna you, make- you're going to make it worse. You're going to potentially develop a longer term injury. And when you're at the age that he's at, that might be a career ending injury. You know. And you could see when Baldwin came off, Baldwin was hobbling with that knee for a good three or four minutes before he actually came off. He didn't want to come off. You could see, it, it, and when he came off, he was proper, proper limping, you know, no pressure on that knee. So, yeah, I think we need to be bold and go, let's 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 do something wild and bring somebody in as injury cover for a couple of weeks because damn we need it we really do I mean I, I think Owen Williams could e- even be a longer term signing as well you know with, with Patchell you know in his final year of the contract I, I, I e- even if he comes back and, and plays every game for the rest of the season I, I don't imagine him staying on after this year hmm. so there, there is a, a space open at 10 with hmm. us yeah Maybe we'll save that for a Christmas special, mate. We'll, we'll <laughs> throw all of that. It's the three, December 1st, the 24th. We're going to have nothing to do but talking to each other. <laughs> it's a college special. We've, we've got a, you know, Dewa Shield special, everything. Yeah. So, speaking of, so let's let's do predictions then for, for this weekend. Let's, let's try and finish on a positive one for the, for the Scarlet section. What are we thinking prediction wise this weekend? Well, same as always for me, I'm going for a win. Yeah. Because, <laughs> that's that's know, the we, point, we, yeah. We could be coming up against the All Blacks again, not that that's happening, and I'd still predict a win. Yeah. Uh, but all I know, I think there's going to be a little bit more focus on attack this week mm. than defence. So I'm. I'm, I'm going to go for 35-26. Why not? 
Yeah, I, I'm going to go. It's an absolute bloodbath for the first 10, 15 minutes. We're just going to beat them up and just stop them playing. I think we will. I just think Ken's just going to go, right, come here, son, bang, have one of them. Come here, you, bang, have one of them. And and I think it's going to be carnage for the first 10, 15 minutes. And then we're going to win comfortably bonus point, you know, 30 odd, uh, 30 odd 10, something like that. And and I think we'll cut loose. But if it clicks, if it clicks on Saturday, all will be forgiven, you know, because it'll look amazing and we'll be running in tries left, right and centre and they won't have an answer for it. Um, If it doesn't click on Saturday, then they, they've got to make something of the, you know, saying thank you to the fans and let's take a couple of weeks to reset ourselves sort of thing. But yeah. 30 points to 10, I'm going for, um, depending on, obviously, whether or not I can get up there. Because, you know... We're going to make a difference. I, I, I may well be running on at 13 at some point. <laughs> Tony, he's, he's a very big, slow 13, isn't he? <laughs> and and why, why does he keep holding his back and his knee and his neck? <laughs> What's wrong with him? But no, I, I yeah, if I can get there, I will. But, yeah, I think uh, it's either going to be really nightmarishly close or we're going to run away with it. So I'm going to say run away with it, 30 points to 10. Yeah. So let's let's move on to, to happier things, easier things to talk about. The local game, Pembrokeshire Rugby. Now, before we even start on on the rest of it, obviously we've done the the, the scores and and what have you on Saturday. So let's talk about the game that we 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 picked as the game of the week: Saint David's and Langham. Now, there was a game; they played some rugby. Saint David's played well; they scored some tries, and then after the game. I don't know if you've seen this on on Facebook, but after the game, the and, and it, I think it was Langham, one of the teams, definitely one of the teams, maybe both, who knows, dressed, uh, dressed as um, Bavarian barman. And i got to be honest, right, the effort that those boys put into that fancy dress on Saturday was absolute top-notch. It was every single one of them, all 20-odd players, 25 players, were absolute mint. They had the, the, the lederhosen, it was the shirts, it was the hats, it was the little tassels on the socks. It was, you know, that's, that's, what, that's why you play St. David's. In my head, that's why you play St. David's away. Anyway, <laughs> that's, that's, that's the point of playing St. David's away for me but I get shows you know we, we've spoken a while about just how important the the, the community game is and and having games away in in St David's will you know do that for you you know that's that's the the whole point of it isn't it so but anyway I'll I'll, I'll put that out on social media when 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 I've done this, just so everyone can see how absolutely amazing. This is how you do St. David's away. It was awesome. Absolutely awesome. I, I saw that photo and I was like, you know, one guy would have been brilliant, but the sheer amount of them together, it was awesome. Yeah, yeah. It was every single one of them and fair play to them. Every single one of them to a man was spot on where they needed to be. So, <clears throat> Let's quickly run through fixtures for this week, then. So uh, let's uh, let's have a look. So this weekend is Cup weekend. So um, and Narbeth are playing Cup as well this weekend. So it was last time Narbeth had a league fixture and everyone else played in the Cup. So, uh, but before that. Before that, on Wednesday night, um, Colleg Sibembro are at home against Colleg Gwent. So, again, I'm assuming that that is in Narbeth. So, 
expectations on that one. I'm I'm gonna go. That would be a Colleg. Unfortunately, I can't see anywhere else other than a Colleg went win quite comfortably on that one. That's that's the logic side of your brain talking. <laughs> let's your heart. Let, let's believe that that somewhere Saban Brock can pick it up and get that win. Yeah, it's got to come at some point, but I just I don't think it's going to be this week. I'd love to see it, you know, happening this week, but it's it's not going to happen against Colin Gwent. But there we go. Um, so. <laughs> The uh, under 15s, so the, the under 15s lost, uh, I think it was 22 20 or 2018 to Keridigion last Friday. Um, they've got a bye in the next round of games, so they're not playing now until November 14th, is, is when they're back on the pitch. But it was a close game, and by all accounts, um, well supported and um, a, a good game for everyone. So, yeah. Well done, boys, on that one. So let's have a let's have a rundown of this weekend's fixtures then. So Narbeth are at home against Pontypool in the Championship Cup. Ooh, tasty, <laughs> very tasty. Mm. You know, top three in this championship. I, I know this is the cup, but it is, it is Pontypool, Neath and Bargoid. We've had Neath, we've had Bargoid. You know, Pontypool nice and early in the season. It, it's just wondering what Pontypool is going to turn up. Are, are, are they coming at full strength or are they going to give a, a bit of rotation a go? Well, that's what I was thinking. I was thinking, you know, are they going to are they going to be bothered with the Championship Cup? And and I think that might play into Narbeth's hands. So I, I've gone Narbeth um, just because they've been playing so well recently. And they've nicked a couple of wins in that last couple of minutes. And I I think it'll be a bit of a shock for everyone else, but not for us. So I've gone for a Narbeth win on Saturday. Uh, I'll, I'll back Narbeth every, every week. Why not? <laughs> okay. Krummach are away in Bonamine. <clears throat> this, this this is a big game because Bonamine are flying high in uh, one West Central. Mm. But uh, I, I'm, I've looked at their quality of fixtures, and uh, I, st- I, I think Krimich are going to keep their undefeated streak going. I, I think Krimich are going to do it again. Yeah, I, I played in Bonamine a couple of times, and it's not an easy place to go and play. You know, it is. It just feel you feel people staring at you as you're walking through. But Krimich are used to that. You know, everywhere they go, everyone hates them, so they they're used to that. So I think that they'll 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 cope really well up in Bonamine, and it, I think it'll be a really good game. So I, I'm going Crimmick as well on that one. So next we've got Pembroke away in Birchgrove. I, I I want to say Pembroke. I I I really do. I I would love for them to break their duck this week, but I I just I just can't see it happening. And I'm I'm really sorry, but I, I've got to say Birchgrove. Yeah, same here, mate. I I think um, they're in for a tough ride on that one. Uh, so I've gone Birch Grove as well. Uh, Whitland away in Tondee. Tondee, I just don't think this is uh, the Whitland team that uh, everyone has, has known for the last mm. decade. It's just the I we we don't know what's going on. Some someone's poisoned the water or something. <laughs> Yeah, I think they tilted the ground. It's uh, it's it's no longer flat, and they're always playing uphill. Yeah, I've gone for Tom D as well. I just, uh, I think Whitland just need that bit of confidence, and um, and they'll be back. But I can't see it happening against Tom D. Uh, same really goes Milford uh, away at Pyle in the Division Two Cup. Um, I've gone for Pyle there for the same reason. I just think Milford are just struggling. I don't oh, I'm I'm happy now. Why is that? I, I'm good. <laughs> cool. Okay, we have a difference. Cool. Um, <laughs> Tembi away in resolving. Who who have you gone for there? Uh, I've gone for Tembi. I I think they're gonna they're gonna want to bite back 
after uh, you know this, this weekend's really well, one point loss. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I think can be a building. Um, I, I think they might nick it in in resolve. And like you say, it's, it's they've had a couple of close games, and I think they've got a squad that is good enough to to cope with it. So I've gone for a ten B a ten B victory there as well. But um Fish got away in Morriston. I, I was I'm in an R in with this one, but you know Fish guard again, they they're on I know they lost an, another one point loss mm. uh this weekend, but they they're on a good run of form. So I, I'm sticking with Fish guard. Uh, see, so we've got a variation there now because I'm going with Morrison simply because Fishguard's squad is, it's not thin, but you you need to rest players where you can. And I think they'll rest players against Morrison, uh, particularly going away. I think they'll go, you know, there's there's a couple of key players there that you just need to rest whenever you can. And I think... This is the time, particularly with that league being so tight, uh, and you you want to focus on that league. So I don't think they'll they're going to focus particularly much on it. I know they've had good runs in the cup in the past, but I just think it's not the season for it. Um, so I've gone Morriston over that. So apologies to my 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 seagull friends, but um, yeah, I'm putting you down for a loss this weekend. Unfortunately, <laughs> don't look at me like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've lost your sound again, mate. I've lost your sound. But... <laughs> um, so then we look at Division Three. So this this is the big one, the Division Three Cup. So Pembroke Quinns at home to Biner. Is it Biner? How do you pronounce it? In yeah, I've always been. I've always been told Binna. it is. Right, yeah, I would just always call it Biner, but yeah, lots. Of, I mean, loads of different pronunciations for it. So uh, anyway, I've gone Quinns win. For for that, uh, yes, I'm the same. Yeah. Okay. So next game is interesting. Nayland at home to Larn. I mean, Nayland can't seem to buy a win at the minute, so I, I I've gone with Larn. Yeah, and as you say, Nayland is one of those intimidating places to go and play. But I think Larn are on fire at the minute. I think they they all singing, all dancing, and if anyone's, if they're going to go anywhere and win, they're going to go to Nayland. I think it won't bother them. So, yeah, I've gone Larn win at Nayland. Haverford West away at, now this is another one, Cum Llinvec. Is it Cum Llinvec? I've never heard of that team before. I, I'm not trying. <laughs> well, that's why I've gone for a Haverford West I'll win. <laughs> and I think Comes in well, yeah. I, I don't know. We we need we need some clarification on these club names. I've not got a clue where the pitch is. I've not got a clue who they are. So, yeah, the hell with it. Anyway, for for that one, I've gone for Harford West Wind because it's easier to say. <laughs> yeah, I, I haven't gone for that reason, but you no, know, Harford West they, they they picked up a win on a weekend, and I, I'm going to say they're back. So back. they start when running go in. <laughs> uh, next we've got Sinclair's at home to Tregaron. I think that's an easy one to predict that. Yeah, Sinclair's are on fire. Yeah. And then Cardigan away in Tybach. Cardigan, easy for me. Yeah, see, I, I, I think Cardigan are just in that place where it's not great at the minute. But So I've gone for a Tybach win there. Uh, and then St. David's are at home against Tumble. Now, I'm going to tag the Tumble boys in this and let them know about compulsory fancy dress. So if you are from Tumble and you're listening to this, fancy dress in St. David's is compulsory. So it's it's, it's not a request. It's compulsory now. And you've got to go something to beat last week as well. So, with regards to the game, um, Martin's had to drop out, he's had to nip and pick up his wife from work, so um, Martin's predicting a St. David's win, um, as am I, so, um, but it'll be a, a, a bloody good night in the clubhouse after. 
So that's the end of this week's podcast, guys. We have reached the end of another one. Um, pleasure, as always. A big thank you to, to Martin uh, and for you guys for listening. So don't forget, you can catch up with our scoreboard rundown on Saturday night and let us know what's going on with your teams this weekend on our Facebook page. We will put the uh, scores up, uh, well, sorry, we'll put the fixtures up later in the week and we'll put all the teams on as team news comes out. And if you want to put your um, match reports on there or you want to come on the show and give us a match report, then please too, you'd be very welcome. So that's it for this week, guys. Have a great weekend, enjoy your rugby and we'll catch up with you next week. You have been listening to the Westerer is Bester podcast from the Scarlet Supporters PEMS team. You can follow us on Twitter on Scarlet PEMS, find us on Facebook with Scarlet Supporters Pembrokeshire, or email us on scarletspems at gmail.com. And remember, West is best, but Westerer is Besterer. Cheers. Podcast Network.